Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome. It is League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for now the best of fives. The next round, the main stage of the play. Not the play. Just the main stage. The bracket stage. Best of fives in MSI. And I gotta say, leading into this day, having the teaser video of the four Chinese constellations going through them all and then team liquid comes up and you go and one of these teams doesn't quite belong with these other four these other three i'll give them credit i was not knowing what direction they were taking that intro but i did actually love the vibes of it and enjoy it but yeah a bit of a switch up heading into team liquid after all that but uh, hey, back on that horse lcs fans i know we're fresh off of the disappointment of getting ousted once again from a play-in type of situation. But you got a squad leading the charge. Number one team, Team Liquid, up against Top Esports. I hope you're buckled up. Up against a much bigger threat than what PSG Talon was doing. God bless him. Kobe commentating, casting this oh. one yet again. And right into the series, game one, we get Lucian Nami for Jackie Love which is, I'm already hovering the panic button at that point. You get some lane swapping going on, and it's going okay for Team Liquid. They're actually doing well with the lane swap until something gets loose in the brains of Yon and Core JJ. because instead of recalling, swapping to the bot lane, they say, let's camp in this bush, opt into the 2v2 against Lucian Nami, who are both a full level ahead of us. I don't know the decision making there, but it cost them the whole game. Let me tell you, the decision making is, okay, we, we can pull these off. We can bet on ourselves on these. In the LCS, you don't do that on the international stage. You don't do that against a top esports. You don't have that type of uh, ability to pull it off. That doesn't exist at that point. Never mind into what is the Lucian Nami on the general level and what that is being played at from top esports. I think there's something to be talked about with, of course, that Lucian throughout this series, but specifically in this first game, it's somewhat palatable because you look at the bands on the side of Team Liquid and yeah, you're going after Jackie Love. You're going right after that ADC pool. You're taking out some of the big, you know, uh, the Draven, the Senna. You're going right out at the Varus, of course. That leaves up that Lucian. You let him get that and you let that power go through and comfort for a player like Jackie Love. You set him up with that challenge of that 2v2 bet on yourself. But Jackie Love's betting on him every single time and he's playing with house money. It wasn't much of a challenge for him and Mako. He's spamming question mark pigs like, what are these guys doing? Running into us, opting this from there. I mean, top esports could get anything that they wanted on the map. You even had... Listen, going into it, I know APA, everyone's talking about the all chat, and he goes, oh, three bands, LOL. And then Tian saying, shut up, just straight up in English. And that's exactly what he did to TL for the rest of this series. Holy giga Chad Tian stepping on through. That's what every, everyone needs a Tian in their solo queue that shuts up that guy that's just yapping away for no reason whatsoever. Getting anybody distracted, tilted whatsoever. Drops the shut up bomb and gets back to business. And it is back to business with world champion Tian in the jungle for top esports. That's the level of play that he was at for the day. He was infuriated by this type of attitude, this type of cockiness coming through in that all chat, reminding the LCS very much of our place. And uh, he even did it. His two favorite picks, Zin Zhao and Viego, banned in game one. He still has a solid performance on the Viego. So we go into that game two. He gets the comfort pick, Zin Zhao. After getting blasted in 27 minutes, getting a single turret, zero objectives, and only four kills, Team Liquid says it's time for the full scaling angle with the double dragons, Aurelian Soul, and smolder and what do they do but proceed to lose the game three minutes quicker how do you possibly think you're getting to the late game against tes and even if you get to that late game what's on the side of top esports and what's made it through this draft this time it ain't illusion 
Oh, it's a sneaky Senna in that bottom lane for Jackie Eleven. This ain't the Senna that's hitting those ultimates backwards. This is the Senna that's hitting you from the other screen, was the way that this Senna started to scale up and have that power, of course. Uh, heck, not even scaling up. It was an immediate hit of the gas pedal for the Senna and for Top Esports. I can understand the angle of the Aurelian Soul for APA. I've talked a lot about how I think this Aurelian Soul still is this unique champion where he exists and what type of play you have to bring with him and how you have to lock into his and, style. And he got a cool 360. 360 no scope, it, okay. And to be the credit, APA is someone that is in that type of category that I would throw towards the players that can lock in, can get into that type of style and, and utilize the champion the way it needs to be. The question is the double dragon and you're throwing in the smolder at that point. I think a lot of people uh, very confused about this one. We are many weeks, at least more than one patch away from when Smolder was that type of threat, that type of priority uh, in the bottom lane. And coming from the league, the LCS, where we're playing on live damn patch. How are we rolling through with a Smolder at this point? Zaya, Kaisa, I I'll take a Jinx, like any of these other picks, you'd be picking over Smolder right now as every other team and region is but uh yeah i mean the set wasn't even the big issue the support orn that's solo killing your aurelian soul became the bigger issue from the bot lane uh that is such a crucial mistake from apa in that top side i think everyone you know that knows aurelian soul knows the kit plays it knows exactly what he's trying to do knows the safety that he thinks he's got in these abilities but you also have to have that presence of mind to realize Okay, well, who's in my who's in my vicinity? It is that Mako on the Orn, and realizing Orn's got you know two, maybe three chances to interrupt you from getting your escape, from getting that fly away, and absolutely someone like Mako, good enough, smart enough, clutch enough to pull off the play at the right time to get you before you can hop out, make that wall, that dash over, fly over the wall, and it is Dunzo for you. Yeah, it just seems like disrespect to not think that the players of this caliber can get the timing right to enter. This isn't solo Q and N A, man. You're gonna tell me APA, the guy in all chat against Top Esports representing the LCS, he's disrespecting? No way. This is this is three world champions on this roster. T. I gotta put a little respect. So they go into that third game and say, "Listen, we've got it." We've got the strategy. They first pick Lucia just where we want him. Now we take away the Nami and pair it with Jin of all champions. What are you going to do now, TES? And we'll lock in the Milio and have an equally as good bot lane. Oh. Oh. Oh, more pain for the LCS. This third game doesn't change anything that we saw in those first and, and, and second game. I can appreciate the adaptation, the throw angle of the Jin into the composition, into the draft. I think that this is one of those ones we've talked about heading into the event that we expect to see be a difference maker in that bottom lane, be something that can change it up, can be an X factor if you're able to get the power out of the pick. Team Liquid was not the team to get the power out and of the I pick. And never mind the last person that I'd want to face rocking in on the Jin the first time at this MSI is Jackie Love back on that Lucian that he shredded on in game one. And you want to talk about feeling the heat for Jan, maybe being a little bit tilted. I'm always here to be giving praise to Jackie Love, but there's a lane swap scenario in this third game and free CS, Jan is down almost 15 CS before he's even laned against Jackie Love. That to me is just, you're feeling that heat and there's a little bit going on to be missing that much free CS. It, it was a it's a panic response i think was the situation what you were seeing uh out of that performance i think a lot of it was realizing what has gone on the last two games getting into that situation for this third game and just the overall feeling and that's one of those important things and especially gonna be even more important as we move forward because this is another a game loss a full 3-0 series for top esports taking it away from team liquid there's got to be a reset. There has to be that bounce back because if it is this performance again, it is lackluster. It is frustrating. It is reminiscent in any type of way of the stinker that FlyQuest dropped against PSG. You can't be doing that as Team Liquid. 
Well, then we can start talking about NA's worst performance as a tournament, as a whole, internationally, when you're including the two of them. But, hey, you know, we're not there yet. They still got to bounce back. But the only numbers you need to look at for this series, first off, 55 to 16 in kills for top esports. Three turrets total for Team Liquid. Zero dragons and not a single game even reaching the 30-minute mark. There is a lot to dissect in this one still, and there will be a very, you know, a very healthy amount that still needs to be worked through even before that quick turnaround comes around when Team Liquid will have to get back out there for another best of five series. And that bounce back needs to be there from all five members of this team, because I think individually, uh, there's ways to talk about what APA did, even as much as, you know, negative with that, you know, of course, the Oren play, and then you extend that with the all chat and everything else individually i think there's angles there are things to take away from this one as apa where you can identify a few sprinkle sparkly moments in this series that happened through which i guess if that's our new limbo bar compared to where things were with for psg uh the psg fly quest series that's not a good look for the for the lcs we're just walking under the limbo bar at this point like <laughs> <laughs> but but other than than APA in that type of regard, I think you'd be looking at Impact being relatively solid, trying to do what he could with what was the situation. I think for a lot of these ones is the way to evaluate his performance. He had to cover so many different gaps, so many different issues, and so many misplays from the side of Team Liquid. I really want to give that one shout out where he takes the Cassante alts away. Someone that was absolutely the ergot going to get that fear beyond death onto APA. He makes sure not happening, sacrifices himself, that type of leadership, that type of team play from Impact. He brought it today. No one else brought it on the day from Team Liquid. Yeah, the bot lane was the biggest gap, and Tien, all three games, was six steps ahead of Umpty. Desperately, you saw Umpty when they're down five, six Kate gold. He's invading Team Liquid's jungle trying to get camps. And time and time again, they walk in and go, what the hell is this guy doing in our jungle? And that's flat desperation at that point. That is realizing the game state, knowing what are my available options. There's not really available options, so I'm just going to go do this type of thing. And that was what, you know, that, that played out for him. And of course, wasn't necessarily the strongest move for him and absolutely wasn't the strongest move for Team Liquid. Last two years, Mark. The LCS against the LCK and the LPL rocking a 2 and 41 record. Uh, I'm not going to give you the percentage on that, but it's not great. Is it bad that I'm actually, like, I had a bit of a smile inside because I was expecting it to be the big old goose egg? Two wins. Hey, you're flashing two in front of me, and I'm going, okay. Uh, I don't know, man. It has been an absolutely crazy trajectory for the LCS after having what seemed like a bounce back, a, a reinvigoration last year at Worlds and a, a very successful accomplishment in beating G2 and making sure that you are part of that top eight, that final eight that's moving on through at the event. Looking in, immensely far from that top eight type of figure right now is the LCS. Yeah, hoping that Team Liquid shows some signs of life in whoever they get for losers. But, I mean, the competition does not get any easier from here on out at MSI. But this is just day one. So all the LCS fans just move on. As is tradition, we become Western fans, which means it's also EU that we're looking for to make some noise. Fnatic next on the Rift. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.